Hello, I'm Katie Varner. Welcome to TMN Television on Thursday, April 16th. Tonight, we discuss the Counseling Center's continued services and have an interview with a healthcare worker in New York. And don't forget to stay tuned for a new segment with the TMN TV staff. These stories and more tonight on TMN Television. You don't want to miss this. University counseling services are still showing dedication to students despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Although they can no longer provide in-person counseling sessions, all current and new clients can speak with counselors over the phone or Zoom. Appointments are 8 to 5 on weekdays and they have an after-hours phone line. It is suggested to contact the National Crisis Hotline after hours so an emergency can get local help. The Counseling Center can currently only serve Missouri students because of licensure laws, but they are more than willing and able to provide referrals for out-of-state students. Appointments can be set over the phone, and more information can be found on the UCS webpage. Joe Hamilton, the assistant director, says that it's important to form a schedule to take care of our mental health. Finally, Hamilton emphasized the need to remember we are all going through this pandemic together. Truman's student-run newspaper, The Index, won 21 awards Tuesday evening from the Missouri College Media Association Awards. MCMA was scheduled to host its annual conference and awards banquet this past weekend, but had to cancel due to COVID-19. The awards were announced through a series of Facebook Live videos instead. Of the 21 awards the index received, seven were first place awards, including categories such as feature page, sports writing, and page one design. Index editor-in-chief Ryan Pavoni says he's incredibly proud of the index staff and the work they do. A full list of the awards the index received and the reporters who won them can be found on the website tmn.truman.edu. Stay tuned after the break for an interview with a healthcare worker in New York. Cape Air, your wings to St. Louis, with nonstop service starting at just $29 each way. Enjoy free parking at the Kirksville Regional Airport, then hop on one of our fast flights to St. Louis and be there in under an hour. You can take the Metrolink from the airport directly to your favorite downtown destination. Dine, shop, catch a game, or visit the zoo. Save time getting to St. Louis and more time enjoying St. Louis. Book today at capeair.com and enjoy the ride. Mackenzie Abbott, a physician's assistant from Missouri, is currently working in a New York hospital to help battle the coronavirus. Gabby Tweehouse interviews Abbott about her experiences working in the largest impacted area of the United States. So my name is Mackenzie Abbott. I am a newly graduated physician assistant. I graduated in December and I got certified um, and licensed in um, February. Okay. Um, you are currently in New York City helping fight the coronavirus and you're seeing like this stuff firsthand. Um, what made you decide to go to New York to help? Yeah, so I uh, was trying, and I was in the process of looking for um, permanent employment when the coronavirus pandemic hit. Um, and so I, obviously no one is hiring back home. Um, so I didn't necessarily have a job that I was like leaving from here, but I just really felt like it was a good opportunity for me to gain experience and to really just put the skills that I had just learned through school um, to the test and be able to do something meaningful. Yeah. In this time where very many people can't really. What was kind of your uh, expectation going into this job versus like what it actually is like? So I actually, I had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. I kind of expected, I was very nervous coming in as a newly graduated PA because usually when you're a new grad PA, they kind of almost hold your hand a little bit to kind of introduce you to the job and everything. And I was not expecting that to happen here at all. I was expecting to be thrown in and you have patients, you have to treat them by yourself. Um, and I was expecting there to be patients in the hallways. I mean, because you hear the stuff on the news, you mm -hmm. hear that the hospitals are completely overloaded. So I kind of expected, I guess, people to just be everywhere, mm -hmm. sick people to be all over the place. Um, and it's really, it hasn't been like 
like not patients in the hallways, obviously. Mm-hmm. Every patient has it their has a room. And my healthcare team that I'm working with, they have there's an attending provider, obviously that oversees us, and there's also um, I medical interns, and so we're kind of we kind of just jumped into their rotation. So we have patients, but we have. Um, a third year medical student that supervises us and also a physician so it's much more of a team effort which Mm -hmm. is really helpful because a lot of them they're used to treating patients like this so hasn't hasn't been as bad as I I had expected Mm -hmm. what do you think is something that um, you'll be able to apply from this experience to like your future career opportunities so I think everyone that is working here in New York um, gains a little bit of humility for sure. No matter what their, I mean, role in this is, doctors, nurses, everyone, because I mean, you do see death. It happens every day. It happens multiple times a day. I think that is valuable. I mean, I think just the exposure, you know, how to handle it when a patient dies, I think is a valuable thing for a provider to take away from an experience like this. And I think, I mean, me personally, I'm gaining a lot of medical skills that I um, didn't learn necessarily in school, but that I will be able to apply to future jobs. And I'm learning knowledge about coronavirus that hopefully um, I'll be able to take back home and kind of share my knowledge when I get back. For the full interview, head over to our YouTube page at TMN Television. Stay tuned after the break for another isolation vlog, a social media review, university update, and a new segment featuring the TMN TV staff. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Here's reporter Rachel Whitehouse with another isolation vlog. Hi everybody, it's me, Rachel Whitehouse, back again with another video to stay busy during the quarantine times. Today we are going to make dandelion tea and cookies, so we're about to go uh, pick some dandelions. We found all these dandelions, so we're picking away. Also, this is my roommate. (laughs) So we picked a bunch of dandelions and then I cut off the yellow part. Um, and I put them in a homemade tea bag made from a coffee filter um, and then boiled my water and um, you just pour the water in. Um, I just kind of guesstimated. Okay, so it's supposed to steep for five to 10 minutes. It's been that. So we're gonna try it. I added some honey to it to sweeten it up, hopefully, let's see. It doesn't really taste like anything. (laughs) What the heck? I only taste the honey. I don't know. It's not like terrible. Hmm, kind of a disappointment, but maybe the cookies will turn out better. So for the cookie recipe, I use a recipe I found on Pinterest. Um, That's kind of what the dough looked like. Uh, I put them in the oven at 400 degrees for like 15 minutes um, and then they baked. They're really easy to make and it didn't really take long. Um, I'll attach the link to the recipe at the bottom of this video. Um, They made a lot of cookies um, and some of them I made look better than others, but um, it was relatively pretty easy and used simple ingredients. So that's cool. I'm gonna try the dandelion peanut butter cookie. Doesn't really taste like anything. (laughs) What the heck? That's what the inside looks like. You can't even really taste that peanut butter. Well, this was kind of a huge bust, but it's okay. I had really fun baking. Um, Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed (laughs) watching me eat dandelions and drink dandelion tea. Josie Wagner presents another installment of the Social Media Review, where she takes a look at the Truman community's thoughts on the university's responses to the pandemic. Welcome to the Social Media Update. My name is Josie Wagner, and this week we're going to be talking about some of the calls to action that Truman and Truman organizations have put out on Twitter. So, 
first we have um, this tweet from Truman State University. So today was supposed to be the student research conference and luckily because of our virtual environment, it still is. Uh, it was not canceled, it was just moved to online. So we still have the opportunity to see those um, awesome student research projects and all those kinds of different things. Uh, it says, Truman's 33rd annual student research conference is taking place today online. To view presentations, visit osr.truman.edu. So ideally, if we were up at campus, we would all be off class so that we could go and watch these awesome presentations. But I just personally thought it was really cool that Truman moved them online so that you could still view them and of course, so that the students could also still present their incredible work. So I hope you had a chance to check that out. All right, next, Truman Student Government, uh, their spring 2020 presidential debate is tonight. It says, want to meet this year's candidates for president and vice president? Tune in to tonight's first ever Zoom presidential debate at 6 p.m. So essentially, uh, you can log in and they're going to be discussing the different topics. It said on the little graphic, it says that you can ask them questions virtually, which I thought was a really awesome dynamic because you can now also take part in the debate, which is really, really cool. So that's going to happen tonight at 6 p.m. Central Time, of course, I'm sure. And I would definitely, definitely encourage you to check that out if you have any interest in student government, politics, policies that affect you directly because student government handles all that kind of stuff. And that'll be a really cool opportunity. All right, next, Truman State University has a little call to action for us because they're looking for nominations for the William O'Donnell Lee Advising Award. So the tweet says, the William O'Donnell Lee Advising Award pays tribute to excellent faculty advisors and demonstrates how important academic advising is at Truman. This is an opportunity for students to honor faculty advisors in their departments. So essentially what you do is you go find this tweet, you click their newsletter.truman.edu and it will eventually bring you to a form and you fill out that form for an advisor, probably most likely your advisor, and just talk about kind of the awesome things that they've been doing um, so that they can get recognized. Now, uh, the recognition also comes with a thousand dollar grant and so I think that that's really awesome and could definitely help with other advising things. So definitely get out there and honor your faculty advisors. I'm sure they'd really appreciate it and it's always great to see a lot of people nominated. All right, next we have a little call to action from Up Chuckles Comedy. Up Chuckles Comedy is a stand-up comedy club and they work mostly through the comm department. They are calling for uh, donations for the Adair County Food Bank. So it says, announcing Up Chuckles online fundraiser for the Adair County Food Bank. The money raised will help feed Truman students and Adair County families that have become food insecure during this trying time at the Food Bank, Missouri. And it includes a little video from one of the members of the club. I think this is incredible what they're doing. I think it's super helpful. It's an awesome way if you do find yourself like so willing to donate. I think it's an awesome way that you can stay involved with the community while not being necessarily in the community. I'm pretty sure I've seen also some interaction from the comm department where they're having people tell jokes in an effort to try to raise money. So that's just really cool. I love that I can see everyone coming together. And I really, I really hope that if you are able that you will consider helping them out. All right, last but not least, we have another one from Truman Student Government. I thought this one was so important because it's filled with such valuable information. It says, Bulldogs, we care about you learn all about resources available for you. So the little graphics that they included have a lot of information about resources that even though you're not on campus are available to you online. And these are things that I totally didn't realize were like possibilities. Like for instance, did you know that the Center for Academic Excellence is offering online tutoring? Because I didn't and I think that's really an awesome opportunity that everyone should be trying to take advantage of. Um, it also includes information. It says check truealerts.truman.edu for like your up-to-date COVID information for Truman. It reminds us that the extension for the final drop date is, five, is May 1st and the extension to switch 
to pass fail grading is uh, May 14th. And then lastly, also that the uh, counseling services and the student health center are also both still up and running. I think it's awesome and super important that student government got this information out to students. It's, it's full of resources and I definitely would encourage you to find this tweet and look through them because I thought it was really important and I really hope that it can maybe help someone. All right, so that's the end. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your week and definitely keep posting up on Twitter. Thanks. Next up, we have Nana Yo Ohameng with a university update where he looks at different colleges and universities in Missouri and the surrounding areas. Hi, I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're staying indoors, washing your hands, and you know, practicing proper hygiene. Uh, my name is Nana Yo Ohameng, and I'm here to give you more updates about what schools around the country are doing to help tackle and you know, curb this coronavirus. So today, we're going to be focusing our attention on Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. In early March, when other cases were multiplying and spreading at a very fast rate, the university had closed for spring break. And in light of this, they had to extend their spring break by another week. During this period, faculty and staff had to work really fast and hard to move everything online so they could continue the semester. To help ease this transition, the university updated its website with all the changes that had been made and also provided a long list of resources that were available to help students and faculty during this period. And these include information about travel, online classes, library hours, move out dates and times, and accommodation for students who were unable to move. They also included updates about commencement. Their original commencement date, May 9th, has now been moved to August 1st, and hopefully by then, all of this should be over. So far, there haven't been any cases reported by the university. The president of the university, Dr. Gerald Wolfolk, issued a statement urging all faculty, staff, and students to be safe during this period and wash their hands and also practice social distancing. That's all for today. I know you guys are tired of staying at home and everything. I'm tired too, but hey, we have to, you know, do what we have to do to stay safe during this time. So please continue to wash your hands, continue to stay safe, be healthy, spend time with your family and all that. See you next time. Our final segment is brought to you by the TMN TV staff, where we talk about things to do in quarantine and random topics. The full version will be on our YouTube page. So, I guess first things first is like, what have you guys been doing in quarantine to keep yourself busy? Anyone? <laughs> this is the question that is my entire isolation blog. I'm not going to answer that. Studying. Is that enough? Maybe playing video games. Uh, I talked to some people that I haven't talked to in months. Uh, that, that's all. So. You're applying for jobs on us. Applying for jobs, yeah. I did that too. Yeah, the place some. is hiring now? So some places, yeah. Some He's applying to be I've my heard. manager. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. I've heard a ton of places are like dropping their summer internships and stuff. Like, yeah. a lot of places are like canceling jobs. Oof. I already had yeah. an internship for the summer and it got canceled. Oh, I so. wish I had an internship. <laughs> This has me been too. a great excuse for me not to get one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to learn how to crochet. Yeah. Um, it's not going very well. I have like a line about that long of like a single stitch. Mm -hmm. And that's my like week's work. So That's progress. What do you want to make? I don't know. My friend showed me this like bear you can make and it's really cute. I like feel like something like that. And then I've also taken up gambling. Uh, what? My parents taught me how to play poker, and it's my new favorite game. Oh, yeah. Poker's super fun. <laughs> Do you play for money, like, with your parents? <laughs> yeah. We just have, like, like, we bet, like, nickels and dimes, not, like, real money. Okay. <laughs> you, bet, you bet Germex and food. <laughs> Roll the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, rations. <laughs> <Get> rations. <laughs>
I started having pen pals or like writing to pen pals, kind of. So right, that's been maybe, cool. Yeah. I've been writing people. Send oh. me a letter. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I bought stamps. <laughs> I don't have them with me. Oh my gosh, yes. I have one in Canada and one in like Wisconsin, I think. So. Where did you find pen pals? Do what? Where did you find them? Uh, there's a subreddit on oh, Reddit <laughs> called like r slash pen pals. That's awesome. I saw on Twitter that there's like an app you can get that like is kind of basically facilitates pen pals, but you like reply on the app so you don't actually send mail. And oh, wow. I, was, I was like, that's kind of dumb because like the whole point is like it's fun to get mail and stuff. But then people were like, no, because then you, you don't have to get your address out to random strangers and like safety and stuff. <laughs> Somebody asked me this the other day and I think it's really funny. Um, what's the best meal you've had in the past week? And also, what's the weirdest? The, the, probably the best meal I've had was peanut butter sandwich that I made from really sad. I know, it's really sad. That is really sad. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Lex food is really weird. I had, for lunch yesterday, they gave us, uh, burgers but it was cold for some reason it's really cold do you get to choose your food or like do they just like have it lined up for you guys uh they give us like pick, they give us uh, pick up meals so we just go and pick them up pick them up leave and for dinner it was just chicken breast and it wasn't even normal chicken it was a weird weird chicken breast i think the best thing i've eaten we made some homemade sushi out of just like you know around the house ingredients i guess and that was pretty good it took like all day, but it was worth it because we can't get sushi otherwise. Um, weirdest, <laughs> I've eaten like a block of ramen, just like raw, I guess. What? <laughs> like, just like uncooked? Yes, exactly. What Everyone's hell? done it. No, it it's not the worst. It's not bad. It's actually it's a good snack. Right. It's crunchy. Would, it fills would, you up. Would you eat spaghetti noodles uncooked? Just like no. That no. Those are it's different. A, it's the same thing. It's not the same Try thing. It. Try it. How? Try it first. Yeah, go get some ramen right now. No. Break it off. <laughs> no. I'll go get it. It's good. Go, go, eat, gets it. go eat raw chicken. You'll see what I mean. It's not the same at all. It's, it's good. It's you don't... I'm glad that this is being recorded so that the world can see how insane you people are. The only thing is then you have um, an extra flavor packet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I add it to the next, to the next time I do ramen. <gasps> I should do that. Like go. double the flavor. Ew, yeah. there's so much salt. Oh, you're so picky guts. Okay? I ate a whole block of ramen raw. Does it look like I care? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on quarantine. Okay, whatever out of this sticks is great. This is what the end of the world looks like: is people eating raw ramen and then doubling up the next time they have ramen with twice the amount of MSG. Well, it looks like we're gonna survive the apocalypse, and you can go starve. Well, <laughs> good point, I guess. <laughs> In a world where this is like this is gourmet cooking, I don't know if I want to survive. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in with us tonight. For more news coverage, check out tmn.truman.edu. And be sure to follow TMN Television on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. From all of us here at TMN, stay healthy and wash your hands.